they are cleaner, sharper, and bolder. More than a century old, but they pack a punch with every edition that they deliver. I have with me today L V Navni, a CEO of the Hindu Group, and Suresh Balakrishna, Chief Revenue Officer. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Our pleasure. So tell us, let's start with how does a new tagline uh, resonate with the ethos of the brand and how does it take forward the brand's proposition? Want to take it? Right. I think it resonates uh, what the brand stands for editorially, what it's told over a 144-year-old journey. So while, while the ethos towards content has remained constant, the way we deliver content has changed from time to time. Uh, so okay. cleaner, bolder, and sharper reflects not just the design ethos; it also reflects our editorial ethos. Uh, in fact, one of the one of the things we started with was an ad, a teaser ad that said, "Can a brand's design reflect its editorial ethos?" And we said, "We believe we can." Uh, so okay. the content is cleaner, sharper, and bolder. Uh, the design is cleaner, sharper, and bolder. And the user experience is more pleasant than it was. Okay. And and please, please share key highlights of this new look and feel of the paper for Hindu and business life. As far as Hindu is concerned, um, I can tell you that um, um, it looks um, much cleaner, the layout. The, the space uh, between columns is increased. Lots of white space. So, you know what white mm -hmm. space does to a paper, right? It immediately lifts the... Uh, look of the paper, there's a lot of white space in between, font size is increased. Easy on the eyes. Yeah, yeah. so therefore, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can read it uh, uh, very clearly. And uh, interesting thing, we have a nice promo panel below the uh, below the masthead. A, a promo panel that tells you which are the key stories uh, inside and very nicely designed promo panels with prominent pictures and all that. And another interesting thing which we have done, which uh, unless the reader will catch it over a period of time, uh, but unless you explain it, you might not have caught it, is that uh, the prominent stories are in big, bold typeface, the headline. And as the stories become okay. less prominent on the same page, the headline becomes less bold and less prominent. So actually, the headlines are stacked up depending on the prominence of the story. So your eyes will go to stories that my editor, editorial team feels are most prominent. They will go first to those stories. And they need not necessarily be at the top. Need not necessarily be at the top. Right. It could be somewhere in the middle of the page also. You could have a very bold headline, meaning the story is uh, important. So, you know, you might want to read this kind of thing. So, actually, um, it's much better navigation for the reader. You know, and uh, makes for much more larger pictures. All our picture sizes have um, uh, increased. And overall, uh, the paper feels um, cleaner, sharper, bolder. Okay. So, you mentioned there's a lot of white space. I'm sorry, uh, did I interrupt you? I'd love, love to hear you saying. What, what, what a newspaper essentially is, it's a curated product, right? Uh, so it's it's a finite product. It starts with page one, ends with a finite number, and readers tend to consume it within a finite amount of time. Uh, it, it works mm -hmm. because it's a curated product, uh, unlike digital where there's no beginning and no end. <laughs> so now, now what this design does from a curation point of view is, not only is the content curated, uh, there's a hierarchy of stories. What Suresh was speaking about, bolder headlines, smaller smaller font-sized headlines. Uh, it leads the nav uh, reader to navigate within what is curated by signaling a design hierarchy, saying, we believe this story is more important, this story. Uh, and we also believe not everybody has the time to read everything in the newspaper. Absolutely. Uh, some would read it deep, uh, some would... Uh, read some some sections deep and some sections specifically. Uh, so most of the stories also have a synopsis at the top. Uh, there's okay. a subtext of a story which is two to three lines long. Uh, important parts of that are underlined. Uh, so you're helping a reader uh, in a couple of ways. One, one, you curate the product. Second is a hierarchy of curation. Within individual stories, you are telling the reader, this is what the story is about. If you're happy with this, stay with it. If you want to dive deep, Please do so. Uh, that's what it's all for. So you're basically also competing with a lot of digital platforms which provide uh, news, uh, you know, in, like in shots and all of those platforms. The at glance news, which kind of keeps you updated, but doesn't want you to get too much into it. Interesting. But you all... 
Mm-hmm. Uh, business line, let me, since you mentioned business line as well, business line has gone through a, a, a more significant design change than the Hindu because the business line masthead itself has changed. The Hindu mm-hmm. masthead has remained the same. And the moment you change the masthead of a newspaper, you know, it, uh, the design, the change in design becomes much more tangible and apparent. So mm-hmm. in case of business line, I'm sure you must have seen the, uh, it's become business line with uh, with the, the smaller font in the sense uh, it's not capitals. The B is a small capital and so is the L, right? So signifying more uh, modern, more young, um, and uh, overall a BL portfolio, which appears on uh, Sunday, it's become BL dot portfolio. So mm-hmm. and at the end of business line, there's a dot. The whole again, uh, lots of white space, pictures, all those things have got repeated. So overall, business line we believe is one of our we believe it's one of the uh, best business papers out there in the uh, uh, in the marketplace. And what it does, it our our areas of speciality are areas like commodities, uh, mm-hmm. you know, agri commodities. They're all areas where nobody covers the way we do uh, yeah. business. And uh, uh, the credibility of the paper itself, I mean, uh, is uh, is something that speaks for itself. So overall, business line has gone through a significant change, and we've got very good feedback from. The business community, especially in Bombay, uh, mm-hmm. I met um, I met the chairman of SBI, the chairman of LIC after the redesign, and they were all telling uh, telling me how how business line you know has become so much more fun to read in that sense. You know, it always had serious content, and you know they used to read it, but now it's become easier and more fun to read. Interesting. But you also mentioned a lot of white spaces, both in business line and also in uh, uh, in the regular the Hindu paper. Uh, tell me, does the, that obviously means that the font is going to go up, and uh, so does that indirectly also mean the pages are going to increase, or uh, how does it work? And subsequently, maybe later prices too of the of the copy. Uh, price. I'll start from the reverse. Price of the copy. Uh, I'm sure Nita, you know that uh, in the English, we are the most expensive English newspaper in the uh, in the country as far as cover price goes. So already the reader is paying. A significant amount to, and we are very proud about it. By the way, we're extremely proud of the fact that we are the most expensive newspaper, and we are not going to change our strategy, irrespective of whether our uh, respected competition follows suit or no. They may or may not. That's left to them. But we are very proud of the fact that our reader is willing to pay so much money to read our uh, to read our paper. So mm-hmm. yes, uh, this might also signal another increase in prices. It may. We are not. We are not yet taken that call, but. We are not uh, averse to it either. So whether we are going to increase prices in the next one month, no. But will we increase price in the near future? Maybe because yes, it's the redesign does make the paper paper look more premium, makes it look uh, younger, and we believe our reader will enjoy the experience. We are letting the redesign sink in. It's a newspaper, right? It will take two three months for the for the for the reader to get used to, get, to it. If you're that, familiar with the older version. Correct. So once he gets familiar, we might actually go back to him and say, now that you're enjoying the paper more, how about paying more? We might. So, no, but we are not left that out. But it's a strategy that we will we will, uh, we will continue to follow. Uh, as far as increase in pages is concerned, well, as of now, no. Given the newsprint costs, you, you're aware. Uh, the newsprint costs are so high now in the, in the business that we do selective increase in pages. So, for example, this is season, right? You're, we are talking on... Um, October 21st, right? It's uh, it's season time. Obviously, the pages are much more, there's much more advertising. So, uh, the pages have increased. But I'm mm-hmm. saying when we come to normal times, maybe November, December, etc., we might go back to normal pagination levels. But okay. it will keep, it will keep varying depending on, uh, uh, um, driven by, largely by advertising. But as of now, yes, the reader, see, the, the, the fact is, it caused, our uh, redesign happened uh, in uh, about six weeks ago, mm-hmm. four weeks ago. So therefore, from that time, pages have increased significantly because we hit uh, we hit festival time, right? So the reader has been uh, enjoying enhanced Getting, uh, from the more. time it's redesigned and it's continue for some more time. So, okay. Okay. Now, do you want to add to that? Also, what happens with uh, white space, larger larger font sizes? Uh, the amount of words available per page will shrink. Uh, because you're mm-hmm. giving them the design. Right. So the 10 to 12 percent reduction in word count. Now, page levels are a function of multiple other things. But that that allows us to become sharper in our writing. So you're mm-hmm. essentially communicating what you are communicating with 
maybe lesser number of words. Mm -hmm. One, you are sharper. Uh, second, from a curation point of view, you decide what deserves more length, what, what deserves less length. Uh, and for a reader who's interested in deep diving into it, um, there are additional stories online with clear markers in the newspaper itself. Okay. Uh, say, read this in detail. Uh, so you could use your Google Lens or camera and go straight to the website. Mm -hmm. It's on the paper, there's five to ten percent, around ten percent lesser word space available than it was. Uh, but that doesn't take away the reader experience at all. Okay, makes sense. So basically, after the festive season, we're going to not see uh, much of an increase in the number of pages, but the content quality is obviously going to be the same. Yeah, the number of pages for the reader in terms of content has been same. Uh, okay. During festival season, it's it's primarily advertising that. Yeah, it takes up so a lot of pages. Yeah. So <laughs> festival, no festival. Our, our promise of ensuring ensuring a viable curated product is our commitment to readers, and that doesn't change. Okay, you know, for also for far too many years, uh, Hindu has been prescribed as this go-to newspaper for IAS aspirants, for journalism students. You know, everybody who wants to improve their vocabulary. And you, you know, you also don't uh, overdo celeb news. Uh, you know, the language quality, like you mentioned, obviously is top notch. Does it make it an elitist newspaper? Is that something that you want to change through this revamp? Do you want to make it more massy? See, I wouldn't say it's elitist, uh, but but I wouldn't. Say I'm sorry, uh, I I actually I didn't know. catch you. There was a lag. I wouldn't say it's elitist, uh, but is it's it's a serious newspaper, and it's always been a serious newspaper. Uh, to mm -hmm. that extent, it will continue to be a serious newspaper. But over a period of time, the definition of what is serious keeps changing. Uh, to that mm -hmm. extent, the newspaper will change and it will reflect what is by and large not frivolous. Uh, so we will we will stay in that space and that's served as well. Uh, that is what uh, readers expect from us. That doesn't mean you don't do fun things. You do lots of fun things, mm -hmm. but you probably don't do frivolous things. Okay, interesting. But you know, like like how it's always a badge of honor for editors, and you know, uh, you know, to have a newspaper which does raw news, good news. But you know, from a revenue perspective, and especially when we you know there are always these questions about the future of print and all of that. How easy uh, would it be to expand the user base with this this approach? You know, not classy, not massy, not necessarily massy in that term. So, you know, are you going to change that in some way or is this always going to be the same? The, the idea behind the Hindu is always not going to change. So, like, like I said, the idea is the same, but but the interpretation of the idea will change with time, right? Uh, to that extent, you will see uh, uh, you will see change happening in the newspaper reflecting it. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not that uh, younger, non-IS aspirant kind of students don't read us. So they also read us, they enjoy the reading experience. And you know, we believe in mm -hmm. one thing. If anything, um, credibility and authenticity authenticity will never go out of fashion. Never. You know, uh, so therefore, mm -hmm. and in in today's time and age, it's become even rarer commodity. Thanks to, you know, uh, the web developing at the rate at which it is, authenticity and credibility has really got a premium now. So we were all always... Mm -hmm. considered authentic and credible if you remember all these years that that has become a more mm -hmm. like the like the dollar it has become more expensive currency now which is good for us you know uh, so people are now including advertisers i can tell you including advertisers are willing to ride on a more authentic and credible uh, newspaper and pay a premium for it as well because it has become a uh, little like uh, oxygen at 30,000 square feet uh, in the media business. A little rare. Mm -hmm. so. now, the reason why I ask is, you know, I was going through the last IRS, which is 2019 Q4. And it's mentioned how TOI had expanded its base in Chennai. You know, and we always consider Chennai as the be all and end all for the Hindu. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what? so is that is that a threat or is that in a way... It doesn't matter to you that, you know, take care, let them come. It doesn't matter. No, no. no uh, TOI is, um, is a competitor. We'd be a fool to say they're not a competitor and they're a, and they're a good competitor. They're a very good marketer. They know how to market uh, their newspaper and they've done a service to the 
city of Chennai by expanding the reader base. Honestly, they have done a. They came and they did. They did expand uh, uh, the reader base. But if you looked at the, if you looked at the IRS very closely, and if you looked at Bombay, Delhi, uh, and Chennai, the city with the least amount of duplication is uh, Chennai. Percentage duplication. Uh, do have a look at that number. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting number to study. The duplication between uh, mm -hmm. Times of India, Chennai, and Hindu is very less. So we uh, largely cater to a different kind of uh, uh, a reader base. Audience. I'm not knocking their reader base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, best mm -hmm. of luck to them. But we do uh, we do cater to a certain kind of reader base, uh, which is very different. We believe more discerning, you know, and so on and so forth. So. So it's yes. So uh, they are competitor. Uh, they are a serious competitor. We do take them seriously uh, in the marketplace, and they have expanded the market. But yeah, the readers are uh, they're two, two reasonably set of uh, different set of readers, and that's reflected in the numbers as well, which you mentioned. And you know, uh, this is a common uh, thing. You know, that print increasingly is being seen as this product for the older generation and not the Gen Z. So, you know, you, you mentioned a few things that you're kind of doing, uh, which will catch the Gen Z's attention. Uh, overall, do you think it's possible to make newspaper, you know, give it the same kind of value uh, for the Gen Z, like, you know, uh, quick paced news on, on the mobile or, you know, digital platforms? Yeah, so, uh, you know, news, so, news, reporting, ethos, content, it's not going to change that we, I think we've established very clearly what we stand for. The medium is, mm -hmm. uh, medium of delivering such wonderful journalism has changed, right? And so also at mm -hmm. our end, I mean, um, and if if anything, uh, the younger generation is not gone away from reading. Luckily for us, the younger generation reads elsewhere, reads on the mobile, reads on, uh, uh, reads on the laptop, reads on the tab, right? So, but still the younger generation is very interested in good, serious, authentic, credible content. And that's where mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's where we come in. And uh, so, yes, the newspaper reading audience is a little aging audience. You're absolutely right. Uh, but the, in our country, the truth is the aging audience is the richer audience, you know, <laughs> which most advertisers go after. Think about it, right? If you've got a, if you've got a Mercedes, while well, it's anecdotal to say that a 21-year-old can buy a Mercedes, which is, you know, uh, which is true, but if you speak to the if you speak to Santosh, who is now the CEO of Mercedes, he'll tell you that at least seventy percent of his buyers are above forty. You know, so <laughs> so I'm saying that there is a big audience for uh, uh, newspaper reading people from an advertising perspective. And as far as the youngsters are concerned, reading is a very serious habit. Only where they read has changed, and we are following them there. We're following them on the mobile. We're following them uh, on the web. We're following them on on their tabs. We're very much there. <laughs> it's very interesting that you say that because you know I actually uh, I remember a long time back uh, you know there was this question raised in one of those uh, I think during I, one of the press conferences uh, it, it they somebody said that you know while when you read the newspaper though newspaper is supposed to be this old uh, older generations medium about eighty percent of the ads that you see in the newspaper are meant for the millennial or for the Gen Z so it's a very weird kind of a balance that you're trying to strike I mean I don't know how that works. But yeah, beautiful <laughs> that, you know, you're getting all these different kinds of people and uh, being reached out to through the newspaper, even though you called it an older person's name. Correct. <laughs> and tell me, uh, today, would you say you have complete dominance over South over your competitors? Because I remember the last time we did a cover story on the Hindu, Karnataka and Hyderabad were not really your strongest markets. Uh, and today, how are they faring? It depends on how you define dominance. <laughs> right. Uh, it depends on uh, if you're asking about uh, influence, clearly we are the most influential paper in the South. Uh, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, you want to add to that, I think we are the yeah, so, See, partners, it depends on the definition of dominance. Second, there's no end to dominance. There's, there's never a point in time where you'll say you're dominant enough from, from an economics point of view. <laughs> influence point of view uh, from opinion building uh, we believe we are the most most dominant player in the south of that market uh, in that sense our numbers are different in different markets for many reasons uh, so mm -hmm. since the last time we spoke uh, i think we've improved from where we were in hyderabad 
uh, we are more or less where we are in Bangalore. Uh, that's how it is. We have become far more, uh, far far bigger in uh, Kerala, far bigger in Tamil Nadu. Uh, okay. Bangalore is where is it? Where is at where it was? Uh, Hyderabad is slightly better than where it was. Okay. So, which if you can just give me an idea, which are the places where you are clear number ones? Kerala, Tamil, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, okay. uh, Andhra Pradesh. We are clearly number one. Okay. And and now that you have a new layout, you know, the as is the aspiration to be a South specialist, or is it uh for, about being a paper that has pan national appeal? I mean, even in the north, I mean, we've seen that north is not really like a very Hindu bastion. But is that the idea to capture the whole of India with this this new layout? The new uh, new uh, any new layout uh, solves for a couple of issues, right? I mean, uh, whether you, you do a new layout in twenty twenty two or you did it in nineteen eighty five or two thousand five, the two fundamental questions you ask uh, when you do a new layout: How can I enhance the reading experience of existing readers? And how can I attract new readers? Now, the questions are the same. The answers to these are very different in 2022 compared to what was in 2005. Mm -hmm. So the new layout, in our view, uh, makes it more conven convenient for existing users. And it makes it more appealing to non-users. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that appeal will draw people and it will help you expand. Uh, as far as our uh, our pan India strategy is concerned, uh, our focus largely has been on the south. Uh, Delhi is an important market for us. Uh, we do sell uh, in markets like uh, many markets in the west and east. We do sell our copies, but our ambition there is not to be a, a player of great scale. Uh, our ambition there is to be a player of influence, uh, to be highly priced. And to make sure we're accessible to those who really want to read us. Uh, so, so a Calcutta will never be like a Chennai for us, but it's an important part of our portfolio. And what we try to do in these markets is very different. Uh, mm -hmm. In the South, each market is, an, is a market by itself. Outside of South and Delhi, rest of India is, is a large market. We are happy being small and relevant in multiple markets, but so long as it adds up to a sizable number, we are, we are very happy. And, uh, that's that's the aspiration and uh, that's what we are doing. Yeah. Now tell me about the year, uh, financial year 2023. Uh, uh, in terms of revenue and advertiser sentiment, how has it been? That uh, Suresh will talk about the advertiser sentiment <laughs> and I'll talk about... I can pass the ball. <laughs> okay. yeah. That's good. A great year. Uh, for uh, I'm sorry, I, I actually lost you there. There was a lag. I said, I said Touchwood has been a great year. Okay. Uh, um, uh, uh, so far, advertising sentiment has been good. A lot of advertisers have come back to print uh, and um, retail business has done very well. Real estate businesses, education is, uh, you know, one category that has really, really fired for us. So uh, government advertising has fired for us. So these three, four categories have really fired and helped us uh, build. Advertising sentiment is um, uh, is pretty positive. Last maybe uh, five or six weeks, right? Because of uh, the U.S. recession and uh, the the European markets and the rupee taking a beating, etc. Maybe advertisers are scratching their heads a bit right now. But mm -hmm. uh, if you're asking me from April of this uh, of 2022 now to now, it's been a I would say it's been a dream run uh, for us in terms of uh, in terms of advertising. And I believe I believe that. Uh, uh, in terms of advertising English in English newspapers, we are at the moment the best performing English newspaper in terms of advertising. Okay, and and, and uh, if, if you have to compare it with the pre-COVID levels, uh, would you say there's been a significant growth or have you actually reached that? We have uh, pre we have reached pre-COVID levels. So if you're asking us for 1920, we are operating, we have gone back to 1920 levels now. 1920, I mean, you're talking about pre uh, the first January uh, the level. COVID hit in March 20, right? Right. We have reached, I mean, we are tracking at that level already. Okay, fantastic. And and with regards to circulation and subscription, what kind of growth are you seeing overall, over the past year? Overall, from a business point of view, we had a 
we had a fabulous last year. So last financial year, which was uh, April 2021 to March 22. Mm -hmm. Despite the first three months with what happened around Delta happened, and despite a slight slowdown in January because of Omicron, we had a fabulous year. Okay. We had a spectacular year. And uh, this year, we have had a spectacular year so far. But some headwinds around, uh, some headwinds could be there for the next six months, uh, both mm -hmm. in terms of in terms of uh, advertising outlook, uh, outlook and also cost escalations because newsprint costs are high, dollar rate is high, etc., etc. Et but uh, but we will end the year very well because we are done uh, extremely well uh, till now, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we are hopeful of having a very good year this year as well, which will make it two years in a row. Uh, in terms of our revenues, we are uh, so so different different parts of the business are at uh, different revenue streams. Uh, advertising is at uh, at at the same level as pre-COVID for the first half of this year, uh, okay. and I think that will continue to happen. Uh, okay. Circulation revenues are uh, at eighty-five to ninety percent of pre-COVID level, uh, okay. because what's happened on circulation is uh, mm -hmm. the copies that used to be lower priced uh, and used to be consumed in public places like for instance, offices or uh, airports or stations yeah, or hotels or colleges, uh, that has come down. Uh, but okay. those anywhere were uh, low cover price products. Uh, so circulation, we are at between 85 and 90%. Our digital mm -hmm. business is growing. Uh, our digital business uh, has grown significantly since pre-COVID. Uh, it did mm -hmm. grow fabulously last year. Uh, okay. Continues to grow, but not growing at the same rate as last year. So there's a slight slowdown in growth, but still very healthy. Only in the digital part. Only digital advertising, oh, digital subscription, both put together. Uh, okay, so, I actually want to, I wanted to ask you. You know, your you, e-paper is priced at I think thirteen uh, thirteen hundred per annum. UI is free, HT is free. So what is the strategy there, and what kind of growth have you seen in subscription? Subscription or I'll, 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 I'll come to that. I'll finish uh, the story of last year and this year. Okay, so that's the revenue story. As a company, we did extremely well last year. We'll continue to do well this year. So very positive based on the evidence we have seen for the first six months and the evidence we are seeing in the seven months, seventh month till day. Five months to go and we'll be fine this year. Okay. I'd like to believe we'll do spectacularly well this year. Worst case scenario, we'll do well, if not spectacularly. <laughs> okay. So on now. Uh, on, on digital subscriptions, we have various products. Mm -hmm. so for instance, you have um, uh, one subscription product is our web and app assets. So you could buy the Hindus web and app, or you could buy business line separately, you could buy sports stuff separately, you could buy mm -hmm. front line separately, then they're bundled offerings. Then our e-paper is a separate offering. You could buy the e-paper standalone, mm -hmm. or you could buy the Hindu web app and e-paper is a combined uh, package. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't disclose our numbers on uh, subscribers, uh, but but we have seen fabulous growth and we are very happy with where we are in terms of number of unique paying subscribers. Uh, that number is growing. Uh, mm -hmm. Like everything else in life, it could grow faster, but we are very happy with where we are. Uh, what's interesting within that subset is uh, if 100 people have paid access to our products, over 70% of them have access to the e-paper. Now, now, conventional wisdom, which we earlier dis discussed, was that the newspaper is an old man's product, e-paper is, uh, and e-paper is an extension of uh, the newspaper itself. Hmm. But our e-paper is read by everybody. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no uh, change in age profile or any other profile. The profile of the audience which consumes the web and app is very similar to the profile of the audience com that, that consumes the e-paper. Okay. And overwhelming majority of paying consumers either buy the e-paper standalone or they buy the e-paper in combination with other subscription packs. Now the question is why, which, which again goes back to what we spoke about curation, about bolder, clearer, sharper. There's a large audience that, that says uh, digital has been a boom. It gives us unlimited choice. 
Mm-hmm. But there's also enormous noise in our lives. The choice comes noise. And mm. digital consumption is, you don't know where to begin, where to end. It's problematic. I think even digital subscribers trust our editors to give them a finite product, which is curated, which they can consume start to finish in a finite amount of time, uh, which is why the e-paper does very well. Uh, so the, the credibility, authenticity, and the ability, uh, the believability of our readers and our editors to curate a product uh, mm-hmm. is what is seen in the e-paper consumption. Uh, and uh, India is very unique in this, uh, and I'd like to believe we are also very unique in India as far as e-paper subscription. Okay, interesting. But have there been also innovations on the digital side now, along with the print? At Sorry? this point, have there also been innovations on the digital side along with the print? I mean, you had you had had volume of changes on the print side of the business, but is digital also seeing something similar? Digital is seeing a lot of action. Uh, both from, uh, from from our approach to content to digital, uh, from to the way our teams are structured, both on the business and editorial, and those are things that have that have been changing over the last three four years, and, and we are seeing uh, good progress there, and that's a journey we are on. Uh, mm-hmm. The parts of the puzzle you solve easily, the parts of puzzle you struggle with, uh, but you will you will get there. Uh, so there's a lot of change that's happening. Uh, in terms of uh, what's there for read for the reader today, there's a lot more on digital that that doesn't find space in print for various reasons because print has finite capacity in terms of number of pages. A uh, lot more deeper stories, a uh, lot more multimedia stories, a mm-hmm. uh, lot more stories around uh, niche subjects. So, okay. so, for, so for instance, if you talk about deep space, uh, you talk about black holes hmm. these are deep subjects uh, in a newspaper they're difficult to cover because you might be the number one player in the market but that topic could interest five percent of your audience right. right so your approach to your newspaper is always content caters to the lowest common denominator depending on what your positioning is uh, but if if i did a deep story on black hole comparable to what a scientific journal would do I would have 100 readers in 10,000 cities. Hmm. So on digital, some of the niches is the mass. Uh, and some of our approach to content reflects that. Uh, Suresh also will speak about what we are doing with design on digital. So, yeah, they have, uh, they have uh, redesigned. The business line redesign is already launched on digital. I don't know if you've been to, to the redesign uh, website of business line. Uh, again, much easier navigation. Um, uh, much easier to go from one story to the other. Uh, much crisper if you look at our uh, layouts on on the web as well. Uh, the redesign of the Hindu is uh, uh, going to be in the first week of November, uh, the website. Uh, okay. We are launching the redesigned website of the Hindu in the first week of November, uh, post, uh, uh, post Diwali. So you will again see all the changes, you know, being reflected there. So yeah, there's lots of action uh, on our side, uh, both on the digital front and on the print front. And we're investing a lot in making the you know user experience and the reader experience you know uh, better uh, easier more uh, you know uh, easier for him to consume information that he wants to consume so that's the kind of um, feel you will get when uh, if you now go to the business line website and uh, post first week of november you will see the changes in the hindu as well so are you also and looking at incidentally we are also in the process of redesigning sports star and frontline as well that okay. those will we are trying to catch uh, February, March of next year, but we should be able to launch the redesigned uh, uh, digital uh, sports star and frontline by February or March. So the financial year, this financial year is going to be the redesign year for the Hindu across all its publications. <laughs> Hindu, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important for uh, all newspapers to do, uh, do this on a regular basis. Uh, because our, our belief is uh, design should also reflect uh, reflect the changes around us and uh, people interact with design very differently, right? I mean, uh, you interact with design with everything around you. It's not just the newspaper. Newspapers in one product. And, uh, so our belief is once in four or five years, uh, design should change and it should reflect what people want because content keeps changing. Mm-hmm. 
like you might be a serious newspaper, but like I earlier said, the definition of serious could undergo a change, and you don't see those changes. Mm -hmm. Design also incremental changes happen now and then, uh, but once in a while uh, is a good time to do it. Uh, because what are newspapers trying to say? Uh, that we are extremely relevant. Uh, our business is truly good. We make enough money to invest back into design and uh, serve our readers better. Uh, hmm. And uh, like every other industry, we also, uh, innovation drives our business. Uh, so I'll be happy if all newspapers keep redesigning themselves once every few years. <laughs> but also also tell me, because you know now the, the print and the digital, there has to be cohesion in, uh, in the workings of both. Uh, how are you ensuring that for a reader, it's seamless, the transition from, uh, if he's reading something uh, in the newspaper, he wants to know more, he can directly be, you know, there are those QR codes and scans, uh, you can scan and all of that. Is that something that is enabled on the in the new uh, Hindu, the paper? It's part of the new design, part of the new design and uh, uh, a lot more articles today have uh, read more, view more, listen more, uh, so or uh, complete interview, go online. Uh, so mm -hmm. there are a lot of QR codes, there are podcasts, there are videos, there are additional explainers. Uh, lots of stories in print have many more legs that one can find online. Uh, and even for somebody who doesn't go online regularly, uh, by putting on print, putting that on print, you are making it discoverable for the reader. So the new design solves for that as well. And, you know, now that, you know, at any given time for a media organization, I think print and like we mentioned, digital has to uh, play an equal role. As far as revenue is concerned, today, what percentage is the digital medium uh, contributing uh, to Hindu's revenues? Uh, we don't disclose percentages. Uh, is it? Uh, obviously, it's less than half, right? And it can't be uh, even uh, close to uh, that. Uh, if I were to say that, it's far more less than half. <laughs> because our print business is very good. So, so our, our print business is, is a large business. Uh, what we look for uh, at digital is whether uh, the size of the business is growing, uh, the size of uh, digital money to total money, the share is increasing over mm -hmm. year after year. Uh, and the pace of growth of digital is higher than print because the base is smaller, uh, print base is larger. Uh, as we speak over the last three years, we have checked all these boxes. Mm -hmm. at, at what rate are you growing on digital? So last year we grew by grew in excess of 50%. 50%. This is uh, revenue, right? We're talking about revenue here, right? Only yeah. revenue, yes. Subscription and, um, Subscription ad and advertising revenue. Oh, fantastic. And we also in the fest in the midst, the peak of the festive season, Diwali is right next week. So what is the advertiser sentiment been and are you seeing this Diwali matching up pre-COVID Diwali or even going beyond uh, that? No, definitely um, we are seeing it largely matching up to uh, last Diwali. If you remember, last Diwali was the first post-COVID Diwali. If you remember last Diwali, there was that, you know, a feeling of we need to celebrate uh, last <laughs> year. I think that spirit continues. It's not significantly more than... Uh, uh, last year in terms of festive spends, uh, etc. But it's not significantly lower either. It's about at the, uh, it's about the same level. So uh, we're not complaining because last Diwali was very good for us. So mm -hmm. therefore, this Diwali is roughly at the same level as uh, uh, as last Diwali in terms of both uh, advertiser sentiment. So it's not over the top. Neither is it. Um, uh, neither it's about the same level as last year, which is good. No. So last year was good. Okay, and in this year, are you seeing a lot of new age categories spending? I mean, we kind of seeing the onset to slow down also. Uh, what kind of categories are advertising this uh, festive season? Uh, almost um, similar kind of categories. For example, uh, if you uh, specific to us, you know, Chennai has got a very vibrant retail market, right? It's a very it's a very big retail market with uh, with Vasant and Co and Potis and Nallis and you know, it's got a it's um, it's a very different market. So the retail market is looking good for us uh, uh, this year. The real estate market in Chennai does, is doing very well over the last few years. You know, it's a, uh, the, the, it is expanding. The city is expanding. So therefore, real estate is continuing to do well. So it's largely the traditional categories. Uh, EdTech has slowed down uh, significantly, which used to be uh, very large for us. 
e-commerce has slowed down significantly. You you must have seen that Amazon, Flipkart used to spend huge amounts of money uh, previously, but uh, retail has picked up, real estate has picked up, education has picked up. So, uh, you know, you're right. Some category changes have happened here and there, but largely uh, revenues have not got impacted and it's the same categories, only the importance of the category. No, not a new category has not uh, jumped in suddenly. BFSI continues to do very well, right? Mm -hmm. Apart from the last six weeks when Reserve Bank kept changing its, you know, repo rate. So therefore, the, the banks and all are still reworking their interest rates, etc. They'll come back, I guess, after a couple of uh, after a couple of months. But the last six weeks, all the banks have been a little quiet because they themselves don't know what to charge the consumer. Right, so uh, they'll come back, but BFSI is a category that's been doing very well. So BFSI consumer durables, incidentally, is back. You must have seen, uh, you must have seen OnePlus, you must have seen Apple, you must have seen uh, uh, Whirlpool. You know all these guys, uh, LG, uh, mm -hmm. LG coming back in a big way. In fact, uh, during the festive season, so consumer durables has come back in a big way, which was good, which had gone away from print, uh, incidentally, about two three years ago. So. Oh. If, if, out one category that's really come back into print, it would be consumer durables. Interesting. I don't know while your revamp has been done with the focus on readers, how is it aiding advertisers? I mean, are you seeing more interest after the revamp? With, of course, it's a festive season, it would be hard to tell. But otherwise, are you seeing a lot of positive response from the advertisers? I was at a um, media agency awards organized by a large organization uh, about uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, almost all the media agency heads of all significant agencies were there, and almost all of them told me that they loved the they loved the redesign. They read it from Shashi to Sam to PK to all of them were there, you know. And they were all um, telling me they loved the redesign. And the overall feedback we've got is uh, very 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 good. Uh, we are uh, another a month down the line. We are going to do a little bit of research. On because we believe the time spent has increased. Therefore, thanks to the redesign, the feedback we are getting from readers and from advertisers. Uh, Shashi, for example, classically told me that I'm spending more time with the paper, I believe now. So we are going to do a, a research to find out how, uh, uh, whether time spent, we believe time spent has increased. And obviously, if time spent has increased on the paper, it will have mm -hmm. a direct rub off on advertising. Yeah. Sure, makes sense. And, and tell me, your newsprint prices have been a concern for quite a long time how do you see them panning out and of course with inflationary pressures as well so i i, I expect uh newsprint prices to be at uh, at current levels at least till uh till end of december okay well, what's what's happened with newsprint is uh there's an issue with supply as well many of the mills have reconfigured their machines and shifted to packaging materials from what used to be conventional use. Mm -hmm. This was driven partly by global shrinkage in news, uh, newsprint demand mm -hmm. uh, because newspapers have declined in in many other markets quicker than uh, India is an outlier clearly, parts of Asia are outliers. Uh, but newsprint consumption uh, has been going has been diminishing for a few years globally, and that led uh, that led mills to reconfigure and uh, demand sort of match supply. At this stage, given uh, given the Russia Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. given the pressure on trade, uh, and given given supply side constraints on raw material, uh, which is used for newsprint production. The cost will stay elevated for some time. Uh, I think freight rate will start to ease a little bit. Uh, freight rates have already come down, but they're sectoral. Uh, so our sense is they will stay at these levels till December. Uh, we should see a slight softening of newsprint prices January onwards. Okay. For all newspaper, uh, for all newspaper companies, you typically, uh, what you order today is what you'll consume four months down the line. Hmm. So this financial year will be a year of extremely high newsprint cost. Uh, and uh, people have done well so far. Uh, if not spectacularly well, they'll end up the year reasonably well. Otherwise, there's going to be pressure. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it will start easing uh, beginning of next year and okay. further ease by the middle of next year. Uh, 
but the next 12 months are going to be elevated costs. After that, you could see a tapering off. Fantastic. Also, you know, you've not seen IRS in a bit. Do you feel it should return soon and will it bear good news for print and the Hindu in particular? Yeah, I mean, um, again, when I asked, uh, you were there when IRS uh, question was raised uh, to Shashi and he gave me the same answer. Uh, I asked Shashi what news of IRS and he shrugged his shoulder and he said, uh, shall we go have a drink? So uh, uh, I think that's where it is now. I think they, we need to regroup, but you're right. I mean, we cannot run a business without data, right? You cannot run a business without measuring it. So IRS is extremely critical for this industry. We need to bring it back. I think it'll take some time, but we'll all regroup. Uh, MRUC, uh, Shashi, etc. have already started reaching out to people. I think all of us need to put our hands in our pocket. We need to start uh, funding uh, funding this research and starting it. So as far as we are concerned, yes, we are very keen to restart IRS and we will support IRS when it comes because an industry does need, you can't just run an industry without measurement. Super. And now, like, tell me about your other publications, Sports Star, Hindu Tamil, Frontline, all of that. How are they faring? So each of them are uh, faring well, depending on what what yardsticks uh, look look at, look at. So, for instance, for us, uh, the Hindu is a very important part of our portfolio, both from the influence and financial point of view. Business line again is a very important part of our portfolio from the equity and business point of view. Hmm. Sports star and frontline are extremely important titles for us uh, because we believe they solve for critical problems in the areas they operate in. Uh, they're, not, they're not big brands in the percentage of our turnover or a percentage of time use, but, but that's fine. Uh, so the aim with Sportstar and the aim with Frontline is to further our influence, uh, to solve for issues we believe in as magazines. So for instance, what does Sportstar try to solve for? Uh, our, our aim is for India to be a sporting nation. Uh, mm -hmm. How do we get more people to play? How do we get uh, sports as part of our life? Because sport shapes character uh, irrespective of what you do and what field you operate in. And for that, you need infrastructure. For that, you need policy. For that, you need funding. And funding has to come from the private sector. Uh, so what Sportstar is trying to solve today, outside of reporting about sports, is to be at the center table of connecting different constraints together. How can we get athletes, policymakers, governments, think tanks, uh, and uh, uh, and the private sector sector that can work with public and create private public partnerships? Uh, that is what we believe and believe is the role of sports star uh, in a world that is significantly changed since sports star has been around for forty four years. Uh, mm -hmm. So while we'll continue to report and continue to uh, do what we do, uh, the higher order problem to solve for sports is what I just said, and we are making uh, uh, we are doing everything we can in that direction, and we are seeing signs of early success. Uh, so that mm -hmm. that's the journey we are on. Uh, yeah. Similarly, for frontline, it it depends on what you are solving for, uh, and frontline will do that. Uh, we will see a lot. We will see a lot more action on frontline. Uh, probably three months from now. Uh, okay. But mo both, both magazines do reasonably well. Uh, both of them have uh, also pivoted to a significant digital presence. Uh, and the fact that they're important to us, they mean a lot to us, is reflecting the fact that both these titles are getting redesigned, both physical and digital. Uh, there's a lot more thinking, which is uh, far more purpose-led than finance-led behind these products. And uh, you will see more of it panning out over the next six to nine months. Okay, interesting. You know, I remember when I was studying in the Hindu, uh, this is about 10 years ago, uh, you also had NDTV Hindu, uh, the news channel. So any any plans of getting back into the broadcast space? No. Uh, see, I, I think that the media landscape has significantly changed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so, so one, one, of the, one of the things uh, one, one gets asked constantly or fairly regularly is, uh, I started my career with the Hindu uh, many years ago uh, when I, I worked for a radio station for a few years. Uh, okay. I ran a broadcasting company for a few years. Uh, so people ask me, would 
will you get into that space? Um, so my response is 2014-15, had you asked me this question, I probably would have said yes. Uh, but today, I don't think you need a radio license. I don't think you need a broadcasting license. What you need is the ability to tell your stories in audio and video format. Uh, mm -hmm. And the place to house that content is on your own digital assets. Mm -hmm. um, so we are serious about video journalism. We are serious about audio journalism, audio production. Uh, but all of that will happen within our own assets. Mm -hmm. um, we begun that journey. So do we do some stuff around it? Yes. Uh, do we do as much as we should be doing? Not yet. Uh, do we do it as well as we think we should be doing? Not yet. Uh, but those are uh, some of our key priorities and work has begun on that. Uh, so yes, video yes, audio yes, broadcasting no, radio no. And it's, it's important to have uh, a diverse portfolio. Uh, so so each, each of our businesses like I said, each of our businesses solves for a different financial, solves for solves for what you should solve financially differently, solve for what you should solve for influence differently, and solve for what our purpose is differently. Mm -hmm. uh, each of these sit in various buckets. Uh, so for instance, step, uh, the business step goes back to what you said earlier, right? Uh, you hear a lot of people saying, I studied for civil service exams reading the Hindu or the front line. Uh, I improved my vocabulary from English. So we believe it's a natural extension. Uh, so that's, uh, and we believe uh, ability to speak English better, uh, given all other skills being equal, will get you ahead in career. Uh, that's, that's what STEP solves for. Uh, so mm -hmm. good to have a diverse portfolio of business. Uh, but equally important to look at what each does financially, what each does from, from an influence point of view, and what each does from a purpose point of view. So we are happy with where our portfolio is at today. Okay. And there's one last question, more like a closing. You know, we've known Hindu for the book, for stories, for breaking stories like the Bofors scam. Of late, which are the stories that have given the Hindu a reason to be proud of, which are on top of your list? Uh, that's uh, That's a... That's a difficult question for non-editors to answer. <laughs> and, uh, I think our editors should answer that. <laughs> we are very proud of what our editors produce. We are extremely proud of it. Uh, we are happy. And one of the joys of this job is to work with, to work, work very closely with, uh, with editors, very closely with people whom you grew up reading, very closely with people who three, four years ago was somebody you thought you could never meet and today you are able to sit, talk, have a cup of coffee, have lunch. Uh, so we are extremely proud of what they do. Uh, what they're proudest of, I think, is a question best left to them. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and overall for us also, in terms of editorial, right? I think it's more about the choices that our editorial makes, which is what makes us proud of them. You know, just to give you a, a, a sense, there was a celebrity who got married uh, recently, Nayantara, about a year, year and a half ago, and that was front page news in most uh, South Indian celebrities. So it was front page news for everybody. Uh, her story was there on the front page in our paper also, but it was below. And the story that led was about 11 elephants having died in Karnataka being run over by a train. You know, that was a, that was a, we felt a more important story to run than Nayantara's wedding. I'm not, I'm not uh, running down Nayantara, but I'm saying uh, that was so, it, our paper was the only paper where her wedding story was, you know, a much lesser story. And this, this we felt was a, you know, uh, so the choices that our editorial makes is what makes us pr proud of them. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, when Mr. Trump came uh, to India, uh, Trump and Modi and every paper, every paper, whether it's, whether it's uh, English vernacular had Trump and Modi holding hands when he came to Ahmedabad, if you remember, Trump and Modi holding hands and, you know, hey. uh, lakhs and lakhs of people on the road. We also, of course, carried that story, but that was not our lead story. Our lead story was about the, you know, what, 117 people who died on Delhi riots the earlier day. If you remember, there was some riots in Delhi uh, in um, and people had died. That was our lead story, right? So uh, those choices make us proud uh, that our editorial makes, you know, and that's what we speak to our advertisers about. And, you know, we say that, yes, that's what makes us the Hindu. <laughs> okay. But you continue to make those difficult choices and come out victorious in your selection of stories. 
Thank you so much uh, for speaking to Impact. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Nita. Thank you so much.